Glenn Campbell. It's shining on me like the rhinestone cowboy. And Tanya Tucker. Delta Dawn, what's that flower you have on? The celebrity couple America was fascinated with in 1980. And by 1980, Glenn Campbell was an established country superstar with country and pop crossover hits like Wichita Lineman, By the Time I Get to Phoenix, and Rhinestone Cowboy. And Glenn Campbell was 44 years old. Tanya Tucker was 22. By 1980, she had already had huge success as well with her first hit at the age of 13, named Delta Dawn. And she had had several number one hits since then, like Lizzie and the Rain Man and What's Your Mama's Name? Now, both Glenn and Tanya were strong, confident, talented, but wayward entertainers. Tanya was young, vibrant, and beautiful, and she loved the spotlight. Her public image was that of a tabloid-loving, wild party girl, and she was already hooked on drugs, specifically cocaine. Now, Glenn was a strong, successful, masculine entertainer, known for his quick smile and down-home personality. But Glenn was just coming off of his third divorce. And Glenn was also hooked on alcohol and cocaine. Now, as you might imagine, Glenn Campbell and Tanya Tucker, when together, were a recipe for disaster. But the magazines and tabloids loved the celebrity couple. Glenn and Tanya landed on cover after cover of the most popular magazines in the world. Television and newspapers loved them too. And as much success as Glenn had had up to this point, selling over 30 million records and hosting the nationally televised Good Time Hour on CBS, Glenn says he got more media attention in the 15 months he dated Tanya Tucker than he got in his entire 13-year career leading up to it. So how did Glenn and Tanya meet? Well, Glenn first met Tanya at the Grand Ole Opry when she was just 12. Now, they didn't talk much, but they knew each other. But it wasn't until years later, after Elvis's death, when they actually reconnected. You see, Tanya was a huge fan of Elvis, having met him once as a teenager. She also incorporated a great deal of Elvis's entertainment style into her own shows. Of course, Glenn Campbell knew Elvis fairly well when he played on several of his records. Glenn was also a great Elvis impersonator and was hired to record songs that would be pitched to Elvis to record. So soon after Elvis's death, Tanya and Glenn ran into each other and struck up a conversation about the king himself. Now afterwards, Glenn and Tanya started hanging out against the advice of Glenn's friends. They saw immediately what it would take 15 months for Glenn to figure out. That Glenn was at a vulnerable time after his failing marriages. That Tanya was a party girl who loved the attention she got with Glenn. And Glenn was twice her age. Glenn's friends knew this wasn't going to turn out well. But Glenn didn't care. Hey there, thanks for watching. If you would, would you take a second to like this video and subscribe to my channel? I'm really trying to get the Stories of Country Music YouTube channel going, and the first part is the hardest because YouTube wants to see some interaction before they'll promote the video even more. So if you would, real quick, like the video and subscribe to my channel, I sure would appreciate it. Thank you. While separated from, but still married to, his third wife, Sarah, Glenn decided to pursue Tanya romantically. It wasn't long before their affair was everywhere. Magazines, newspapers, and tabloids. In his autobiography, Glenn says that looking back, everything about his affair with Tanya was ridiculous and embarrassing. In his heart, he knew better, but he just didn't care. Now, in front of the camera, Glenn and Tanya were wonderful and stunning. Their amazing talent showing through whenever they sang together. 
They recorded several songs together, including this one called Dream Lover, a remake of Bobby Darin's song. Dream Lover, where are you? Tanya also joined Glenn on tour, so they sang together live quite often, and they always sounded wonderful. And there were plenty of good times in their relationship, too. They both impressed each other's families when they visited. They both seemed to really like each other during the good times, with Glenn lavishing Tanya on her 22nd birthday with a $57,000 party, expensive jewelry, beautiful dresses, and even starter money to open a boutique in Beverly Hills. They even set Valentine's Day in 1982 as the date for their wedding. But behind the scenes, there was an entirely different story. Glenn's and Tanya's fluctuating and volatile personalities, combined with their drinking and drugs, was too much for their relationship to bear. Even as much as they both wanted to get off cocaine, Glenn says they were drowning in a sea of white powder. When on drugs, they fought all the time. They were both verbally abusive and aggressive, arguing, yelling, throwing things, destroying property, and getting kicked out of hotels in the middle of the night. But by the time they made it to the limousine with their baggage in tow, they would be all cuddled up, passionately kissing each other. Their mood swings were as random as they were violent. These fights, as Glenn calls them, went on for months. Tanya would later call them disagreements. But whatever they were, they happened all the time. When they were high, they were at each other's throats. When they were sober, they played for the TV cameras and recorded beautiful music together. But things got so bad with Glenn and his cocaine that he nearly killed himself. In March of 1981, Glenn was admitted to the hospital in Nashville for an overdose. He was sedated in the hospital for four days as the drugs worked through his system. It was then that he decided he had had enough of his drinking and drug habits and that he had had enough of Tanya as well. So he broke up with her. But that didn't last long, because they kept coming back to each other for more. One time when Glenn was playing in Las Vegas, Tanya showed up backstage. When Glenn heard Tanya was there, he became physically sick and canceled the show that night. Needless to say, Glenn's band and business partners were not happy with Tanya or Glenn. A few months later, Glenn was playing in Dallas and heard Tanya was playing nearby in Shreveport, Louisiana. And for some reason, he flew out to see her after his show. They met, drank and did drugs, fought, and then Tanya kicked Glenn out of her hotel room with the police coming to escort Glenn away. And while these episodes happened time and time again, Glenn says they were routine, the drinking, getting high, making love, fighting, yelling, throwing things, pushing each other. But while it was all going on, Glenn and Tanya couldn't stay away from each other. It seemed they were as addicted to each other as they were to cocaine. In fact, even though Glenn had started dating his soon-to-be wife, Kimberly Woolen, Glenn ran back to Tanya and just dropped Kim cold, not even calling for three months. Eventually, Glenn came back and Kim accepted him, but it took some time. But something happened that caused Glenn to completely lose trust in Tanya, and he walked away from her for the last time. Glenn had, of course, been through three divorces, which resulted in some trust issues, and Tanya was a young, beautiful lady known for her good times. So Glenn didn't particularly trust Tanya. When he found out she had gone to a Los Angeles hotspot without him, and then she tried to cover up the fact she had been, he left Tanya and never looked back. From that point on, they never talked again. It was a wild 15 month run for both of them, 
but it was over. Now, they both continued separately with their careers, and as I mentioned, Glenn would soon marry Kim and remain married until his death in 2017, while Tanya, up to this point, has chosen not to marry. Of course, there's much more to tell about Glenn and Tanya, their careers and romances along the way, but that's a story for another day. <laughs>